Shalom Church, praise the Lord. Welcome back to Chosen Treasure. My name is Benjamin Daniel, and it's so good to have you all join in this day. I hope everybody's keeping well, doing well, blessed in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I continue and pray for all the subscribers to our channel, Chosen Treasure. So this day I have a second book review that I wanted to do this year. The first one was um, The Complete Guide to the Bible from Stephen Miller and this one is <laughs> oh this is a beautiful resource material over here it's good for homeschooling it's good for Sunday school it's good for small group Bible study and it's even good as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ as a servant of the Most High Living God to understand about the Word of God the Bible we have maps and timelines and everything that we need to know about God's Word so that we are equipped edified transformed and strengthen and above all we we have the anointing of the Lord to go and preach the gospel of salvation so today we have this one it's called the rose book of Bible charts maps and timelines and it says it's the 10th anniversary expanded edition it comes from Rose publishing this is a Christian based publishing group uh, a Christian publishing group based in the US I think it's bought out from another company called Hendrickson publishing too I'm not sure about that and uh, they have so many books material pamphlets brochures fold outs and lots of lots of great Christian resources to use in like I said Sunday school in church in ministry in small groups Bible study and even for uh, homeschoolers. So it says it's reproducible, it means that you can take copies of this, use it. Uh, I guess a couple of limitations. So let's get into it. It's spiral bound over there, beautiful. And it starts out with a Bible timeline. It, this is a pretty big book. I don't have the exact dimensions. You can always check it up online on Amazon. Uh, we got this on amazon.com uh, all the way from the States. You can, it's even available right here on Amazon India. So you can check out the dimensions. It's pretty book, pretty, pretty big. <laughs> and it's got the Bible timeline. And this is a fold out. It talks about Bible history. It talks about world history. And it talks about the Middle East history because we know the Word of God is centered around the Middle East, Israel, and the surrounding nations and a few of the western nation like greece and turkey fine so this is a fold out here it, it opens up let me try to get a better angle to show you how it looks there there it folds out all the way there it's big <laughs> this is amazing you can actually print this out i mean copy it take photocopies of it spread it out to other people give it out as a great resource material and it also opens up in this fold out with the world history the bible timeline to the tabernacle from exodus 25 and hebrews 9 and 10. it talks about what is a tabernacle rose publishing already have another book i think it's a hundred page booklet on a, the tabernacle and a fold out pamphlet and brochure so this one just talks about the overview of the tabernacle, what it means to the nation of Israel, how God wanted them to dwell among his people, the Israelites, and to have fellowship with them and communicate with them. And the tabernacle was the way that he did it. And today we have our Lord Jesus Christ as we tabernacle with him. So the Rose Book of Bible Charts, Maps, and Timeline, this is the 10th anniversary edition. And real quick over here, it is, <laughs> it is this was surprising printed in China 2021 the 20th printing the copyright on this is 2005 and 2015 and then we had the 20th reprinting 2021 there you go all right it's pretty book pretty pretty I keep seeing pretty book but it is a pretty book <laughs> and it's pretty big too so just holding it you can't really hold it with, with one hand and kind of spoil it I really don't want to damage the spiral over here they've done a great job I, I like the just the overall feel and the look of the book it's hard cover over there spiral is really solid it's not going to come out or got tangled up and on the back over here you get a timeline over here you get exactly what's going to be in the book it's new in this expanded edition there is an older edition you can check it out but i would definitely encourage you to get this it talks about the genealogy of jesus a 24 inch fold out 52 key bible stories the 12 tribes of israel psalm 23 
obviously the most memorable psalm ever. The Lord's Prayer, Heroes of Faith, Hebrews 11, Essential Christian Doctrines. And it goes into favorite Bible topics. Again, very good resources for Sunday school, kids' church, homeschoolers, uh, especially if you're biblical-based homeschoolers, and even small group Bible studies. Names of God, Fruit of the Spirit, Armor of God, Seven Churches of Revelation. Which church are we living in the last days right now? Mm, very interesting. The Beatitudes and the Feasts of the Bible. It's not the Feasts of Israel, it's the Feasts of the Bible. Maps. There are lots of maps over here, just as it says, maps and timelines. Talks about Paul's missionary journeys, the Middle East then and now, the 1040 window, and the world of the first Christians then and now. Then it goes into full color illustrations of Noah's Ark, Solomon's Temple, Herod's Temple at the time of Jesus, and the Tabernacle, the statue in the book of Daniel, Daniel's prophetic dream about the last days and the end times, and the Exodus. And he talks about comparison charts here. Christianity, cults and religions, denominations, Islam and Christianity, full views of the end times. Very important. There's an, another book from Rose Publishing that talks about dispensationalism and about different views about eschatology. It talks about all 66 books of the Bible, how we got the Bible, 100 proofs of the Bible, not just regular archaeology, biblical archaeology together with secular archaeology proves that the Word of God is true. 100 prophecies fulfilled by Jesus, many more coming, and key people and events in the Bible. Many charts, maps, timelines of your Bible study, Sunday school groups, Sunday school lessons, even for your personal use. You can reproduce up to 300 copies for your students. And there it is, Rose Publishing. Yeah, it's HendricksonRose.com. Check it out on Amazon. Go to the website and it's there. I don't know exactly how many pages are here, but we'll go through it eventually. And there it is. Okay, let's get into the meat of this book. And let me get my... Ooh, all right, focus over there. Trying to get a focus here with this big book is going to take some time, so please bear with me. All right, the contents. You get the Bible timeline, the fold-out. We saw that. Tabernacle cutaway. We get the Bible overview. Then we get the Old Testament overview. All right, let me just get this into focus. Then we get the New Testament overview over here. And then we go into maps. Lots of maps over there. Then we go into Christianity, cults, and religion. And it talks about the map index and the subject index. So many Bible charts, maps, drawings, and timelines featured in this book are available, available individually. Yes, they are. Uh, as, well, as well as wall charts and pamphlets. So if you go to HendricksonRose.com, you will find a couple of them are free, but most of them you got to pay for. There are PDFs that you can download also from other websites, but I would encourage you, if you have the finances in, to invest in this, because there's nothing like holding this in your hand, and you can reproduce this to use in church, Sunday school, kids' church, homeschooling, small Bible study groups, and even for your personal use. So here are some illustrations, early illustrations, Bible overview, and it talks about the Old Testament books. This is from the Protestant Bible. We already established that about the Apocrypha from the Catholic and the Orthodox Bible. There are 39 books in the Old Testament. It's divided in the Pentateuch, the Torah, the historical books, the poetry and wisdom, major prophets, minor prophets. We all established they're not minor because they were small. It's just the size of the books. New Testament, 27 books. Yeah. Gospel, Paul's epistles, letters, and general epistles ending with the book of Revelation. So over here, what they have done in this 10th anniversary expanded edition, they've given the, uh, the Old Testament over here, broken down into the first five books, the Pentateuch, the Torah, the books of Moses. And basically, it's very simple. It is context. For example, you go to Genesis. What does it mean? Who, where, when, why? And there's outlines, the creation, the fall, the flood, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob establishing the nation of Israel, Joseph getting into Egypt. And there's a key verse. I'm not saying that that's the only key verse, but according to Rose Publishing, they decided to put it. So as you go through the Bible overview for each book of the Bible over here, especially divided into Old Testament and subdivision, 
you will find a little write-up. It talks about the creation of the flood, the creation of the world, and the flood, and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, children of Israel in Egypt, the Exodus, and the time the children of Israel spent in the wilderness before entering into the land of milk and honey, the promised land. And the Pentateuch is also called the Torah. It talks about Exodus, next in Leviticus and Numbers, and it goes into Deuteronomy. All right, let me just hold it up over there. The next page will be Poetry and Wisdom. No. Oh, we missed that. Okay. Historical books. Yeah, we, we missed that one over there. Joshua, Judges, talks about Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. Again, what you will find in, in this Rose Publishing uh, Bible Overview, the 10th Anniversary Expanded Edition, you will find the breakup over here all about context. So it's so easy. When you have a small Bible study group, this will be nice to get the members of your church, your fellowship, your prayer group over here, or your cell group, or your life group, or whatever many churches call it these days, to ask questions and get involved in the Word of God. So they are built up. The whole reason that I love this book is that it edifies you, even as a believer. It is not a replacement for the Word of God, but it's good that many people in the body of Christ would know this. And also for young children and for young adults in the youth group, in Sunday school, for homeschoolers, and even for personal use. So that you would know. You would know what Joshua all is, what was Joshua about? And what is Judges about? What is Ruth about? What is First Samuel, Second Samuel? What's it all about? And they, again, they are key verses over here. I'm not saying that those are the only key verses. There are many, many more but Rose Publishing decided to highlight these key verses. So it goes on. I won't go through everything. It goes through poetry and wisdom. Next, it goes on to the major prophets, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. It's not the name of a prophet. <laughs> Ezekiel and ends with Daniel and comes to the minor prophets. Okay, now you notice that the minor prophets are 12 of them. So that's why they kind of reduce the box over here, the size of it. And uh, let me get that in focus. He talks a lot about prophecy warning, judgment, prophecy warning, judgment. And that's all that's happening all the way from Hosea to Malachi. Then we get into the New Testament books. We talk about the Gospels and the Book of Acts. First of all, Gospels and the Book of Acts. Then next we have Paul's epistles, letters, everything all the way from Romans to Philemon or Philemon. Then we talk about the general epistles and Revelation, Hebrew, James. Um, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, book of Jude, and it ends with Revelation. And it and also gives a historical context on where these places are today, Asia Minor, Turkey today. Then it comes to this beautiful illustration over here called a Bible bookcase. There you go. That, that is just cool. That's nice for little kids, so they'll know in the order. So sometimes when you ask Young adults even, you know, where's Ecclesiastes? And they're probably looking in the New Testament. So <laughs> it happens. It's always an index. So you don't have to know exactly, but it's good to. It's good to memorize every book of the Bible where it is placed so you could get to it really quick. And I know a lot of you are probably using apps, Bible apps and e-Bibles. E so it's easy just to click and tap and get over there. Next up over here, we have How We Got the Bible, 10 Key Points. It talks the Bible is inspired by God. That's it, settled. No need to debate and argue about it. It's done. It's a done deal. No point contending with it. It talks about the timeline. It talks about how the Old Testament is written. Beautiful resource, like I said, for small Bible groups, homeschoolers, uh, Sunday school, youth groups, even your own personal study. So that if people have questions especially unbelievers, pagans and heathens and non-Christians, you have answers. Old Testament written, approximate dates in the B.C. It's not B.C.E., B.C. and A.D. We don't stick to the C.E. nonsense. Stone, clay, leather, papyrus. Then it talks about scrolls, fine animal skins. Then it talks about paper. And today we have the Bible, God's word to the world. The Bible is now printed on paper in many languages, it's also available in digital formats in many languages, many translations. So uh, we start from 2000 BC and it goes on with this beautiful timeline all the way uh, 1500 AD, time of the Reformation, 
then 1600 talks about the King James Bible 1800 and all the way to 1900 when the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered and it talks about all the different translations that we have here the modern translations or some of them will call transliterations people's personal opinion on it then it talks about the origin and the growth of the English Bible this book is really big so I have to get this in focus and hold it and I hope you can see clearly over here and these are the different versions and transliterations we have. Comparisons, again, just like we saw in uh, the previous video I did with Stephen Miller's Complete Guide to the Bible. They are comparisons of the Old Testament canon, the Hebrew Bible, the Roman Catholic Bible, the Greek Orthodox, and the Protestant Bible with 27 New Testament, mostly. But there's a lot in the Old Testament editions that we don't have over here. Big question, why was it removed? Hmm. Let's look into that maybe later on. Bible translations, a lot of them we have. I will not go through it, but we have the most popular ones here. What type is it? Word by word. And some of them are word by word. Some of them are thought for thought. Some of them are a balance. Some of them are a paraphrase or a transliteration. So be very careful about those. 100 key people in the Bible. Much more. There are many, many more. 100 are not the only ones. Alphabetically starts with Aaron, Abel, Abraham, Adam, Balaam, Bathsheba, and ends with Zerubbabel. Yeah. Then in the New Testament, we have Ananias, and it also goes all the way to, let's see, yeah, Zechariah. Yeah. All right. That's beautiful. 100 prayers in the Bible. It's not uh, a prayer that in the sense that we should be praying, it's a model of a prayer. Different varieties of prayer that we find in the Bible that we could also use as a model in our personal prayer, in a prayer gathering, in the body of Christ, in fellowship and in congregation. We have Abraham's prayer in Genesis, Abraham's servant's prayer regarding the solution of a bride for Isaac, Exodus, a lot of them, Numbers, Deuteronomy, it goes through almost every book. Yeah, every book is touched. Lots and lots of prayer, all the way even down to Revelation. Lots of different varieties of prayer and types of prayers in the Bible. There's heaven's twofold prayer of praise to God, and in the end, the prayer of John that Christ would appear soon in Revelation 22, 20. Okay, then, oh, this is one of my favorite ones, especially if you're reading the Old Testament. It has this entire table of weights and measures. Old Testament, then it talks about what is the equivalent today in the New now, I'm in, in today's world, the American, British, and the metric. So have you heard the word talent, mina, shekel, uh, pound, it talks about that, a cubit, a span, a hand breadth, a finger, a mile, a stadium, uh, a fathom, liquid measures, it talks about a bath, a log, a firkin, all right, a ephah, a very, very popular term that we find in the Old Testament a lot, and a bushel, Again, in the New Testament. And there's also money. It talks about money in the Bible. This is interesting. It talks about the shekel, which is the official currency of Israel today. The shekel, the mina, the talent. It talks about the might. Jesus spoke about the widow's might. What is it equivalent today? Well, back in 2021, it was about 0 0.0012 cents. <laughs> Not even a cent, but that, that's how it is. But okay, a penny is 0 0.16 cents. That's what people were getting for a daily wage of a laborer. Wow. All right, a talent is $960. And then there's other currency, which was gold, silver. All right, okay. Then one of my favorite parts of this book is the names of God, oh, all the way from uh, alphabetically, Adonai, the Lord, my great Lord, El, the strong one, El Elohi Israel, God, the God of Israel, El Elyon, Elohim, El Elom, El Roy El Shaddai, Emmanuel, Jehovah, Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, it goes all the way to Yah or Yahweh. And it has the meaning, it has the application, very nice. It has the Bible reference. So when you use it, you know where it's coming from. It's not made up names. 
It's in the Word of God. And when we use them in prayer, in proclamation, in declaration, in confessing, oh, it's powerful. I've seen that. I've seen how it changes and transforms people's lives. And there's some comments and some pronunciation. You don't have to know perfect Hebrew, but you could pronounce it the way you feel like or the, the way it's supposed to be. But you don't have to do it perfectly. All right, next is Jesus and the names of God. The New Testament alludes to Jesus' divine nature by comparing Jesus to several names and attributes used for God. Jesus is God. Jesus is one. Jesus is eternal, omnipresent, omniscient. And there we have so many. Yahweh Shalom, Jesus Emmanuel, Jesus is El Shaddai, Yahweh Rapha, the Lord we heals, Jehovah Rapha, Rohi, my shepherd, Jireh, my provider, Omnis and is eternal. And this one over here, Sikindu, my righteousness. Sitkindu, not Sikindu, Sitkindu. Then we have the Holy Spirit in the names of God. The Holy Spirit is God. Praise God for that. That is so amazing that, that people would, would not even understand that today. And it's really sad. I won't say amazing, but it's amazing that people would understand. And it's sad that people don't understand that the Holy Spirit is God, the triune God. The Holy Spirit is the Lord. The Holy Spirit is eternal. The Holy Spirit is our comforter and our helper. Life in the Holy Spirit is one of righteousness, peace, and joy, not sorrow, not pain, not brokenness, not distress, but the Holy Spirit brings this in our life. The Holy Spirit judges and cleanses us. When was the last time, church, that we depend on the Holy Spirit to ask Him to cleanse us and to judge us and to wash us, to purify us there? And they are related names, El Elom, Elion, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Rapha, Jireh, Jehovah Mekandishkem, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sidkenu. Beautiful. This is an amazing resource. Please, please look into it and getting it. Then it talks about 52 key Bible stories. It talks about the storyteller, the characters, and the story. And it goes into creation, Adam and Eve, and it goes on and on to, let's see where it ends. Okay, let's get there. 52 it talks about the New Testament next, and all the way to to revelation the climax of prophecy beautiful again there's a character reference there's a story behind it and they are main points and here we have the summary and the main points so what starts in genesis gets to that climax in revelation 100 proofs of the bible there's archaeological find secular together with biblical archaeology description of the find and the importance of the find so I won't go through it all. It talks about Abraham. Um, it talks about many tablets. It talks about the patriarchs. It talks about the land of Sechem, the Israelites in uh, Egypt, Jericho, the Philistines, and Canaanite gods and excavations that they did. So a lot over here. It talks a lot even to today. Remember, this, this reprint was 2021, 20, but since then, till 2024, almost every month, there are new archaeological finds in the Middle East and especially in, in Israel. So it proves. <laughs> hundred proofs of the Bible and it goes for hundred. Yeah. Talks a lot about Jerusalem and the, the temple of Jesus day. Lots and lots of proof of that. And where does it end? 9600 Greco Roman references to Jesus and the archaeological find. Beautiful. Ancient manuscripts. Then it talks about the Christian history timeline, starting from, uh, for, we're not sure, doesn't really matter, the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem of Judea, AD 29, beginning of Jesus' public ministry, about age 30. He was crucified when he was 33. And Pentecost, that took place around AD 33. Stephen, the first Christian martyr, so it goes on to AD 100, so it's divided over here. Uh, AD 1, the first century. Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord, 100, 8200, and 8300. It goes on to 400, 500, yeah, let me just get a focus there, uh, 600, 780, all the way till the Reformation period, and missionary work, different revival, and different preachers from different countries in Wales and England, all the way in America eventually. And he talks about even the birth of many denominations. Um, 
the Pentecostals, the Charismatics, the uh, Baptists, the Methodists. Um, it talks about the Presbyterians, it talks about uh, the Lutherans, and many, many, well, even SDAs and, let's see, I think Mormons too, and Jehovah's Witness. And then it comes into the 1900s, a year of amazing revival and breakthrough. And there's a picture of Billy Graham over there. And it culminates 2004, where it talks about the Passion of Christ movie. <laughs> talks about the persecution of Christians even till today, 2024. There are still 2,000 groups of people who have no portion of the Bible in their own language. And that number is closing in. Yeah, that gap over there, that number, the last time was 2,000. Now I think it's about close to 1,000. So praise God for Bible translation going on all around the world. So now we get into the Old Testament. A lot about 100 Old Testament events. Event 1, creation of all things. It goes into the last event, which is the rebuilding of Jerusalem walls, Nehemiah. And the next one, it talks about the creation. So it kind of breaks it down, what happened in day 1 of the creation. In day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5, day 6, day 7. This illustration, not accurate, but again, artistic illustration. We really don't know how it was. It talks about Noah's Ark. Check it out. Beautiful, <laughs> really massive over here. People mock and laugh at this. Let them do it. No point debating and arguing with them. You stick to the word of God and the truth of the gospel. Noah's Hawk was a reality, it happened. And it talks about the 12 tribes of Israel. With, uh, they call this the, the nameplates. Or, yeah, I think it's, yeah, they call this the nameplates. Reuben means sea, a sun, water, is just an illustration of what each tribe of Israel is related to to get some kind of nameplate attached to it over there. 12 tribes of Israel, 12 sons of Jacob. Then he talks about uh, the timeline from Abraham all the way to the Exodus and after that when the kingdom splits up. He talks about the families of Abraham and through Abraham we are blessed and we are partakers of that blessing as the body of Christ today, as believers, as Christians, we are partakers of that blessing upon Abraham. So it's Abram and Sarai, renamed to Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, and Esau's timeline, father of the Edomites, disastrous. And it goes all the way to children of Israel in Egypt for four and thirty years, part of that time of slavery. And he talks about each tribe, Reuben, and here's the breakdown. Reuben, what does Reuben mean? See, a son. The water is a symbol or a nameplate. The color is turquoise or emerald, greenish blue. First born of Jacob, born to Leah or Leah. There you go. Talks about the location, historical location, not current location. Moses' blessing. We don't really talk about tribes today. And a lot of people are stuck on that, saying that they are descendants of the 12 tribes. Well, maybe you are, maybe you're not. So that's not something that we should be focusing too much about. But back then it was very important. Simeon goes to Levi, to Dan, uh, Judah, tribe of Judah. Again, you notice for Judah means praise. The symbol is a lion. The stone is cornelian or, or ruby or red. There you go. King David and Christ was born in Bethlehem as Micah prophesied. Dan, Nephtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar. Zebulon, Joseph, Benjamin. Let's see, what is my... <laughs> I'm curious here, okay. Son of the right hand. Yep, I knew that. That's what my name means. Oh, I'm a wolf. <laughs> I didn't know that. All right, okay. Amethyst. I, Amethyst of purple, yeah. Yeah, I knew that one part there. Benjamin. So, if you're a Benjamin, or if your name is Joseph, you are... Ah, uh, let's see. He will increase. And you are a symbol of sheaf of grain. Yellowish brown. All right, very interesting, very fascinating, love this. Then he talks about this beautiful, lovely map of the Exodus, where they started, where they went round and round and round for 40 years and eventually came to the land of milk and honey. Then there's a timeline of the Exodus, um, Joseph, all the way from Joseph to the Promised Land, and the key people. So the tabernacle, we saw the fold-out, a much uh, smaller illustration. The bigger tabernacle fold-out is in the beginning. Then he talks about the key elements of the tabernacle all the way from the high priest, the duties, the table, the altar, the veil that was torn in half after Jesus was 
uh, crucified, put on the cross, and he said it is finished. The veil was torn into half. And that veil we see, and we go into the most holy place, into the inner sanctum, where they keep the Ark of the Covenant, where nobody could go. But now we have access because of the blood of Jesus, the tabernacle. So, so we tabernacle with Christ. And he talks about all the elements, the pattern that God gave Moses according to what's going on in heaven. Amazing. And it has this beautiful comparison here. The Israelites commune with God through the tabernacle. Christians commune with God through Jesus Christ. So Christ is our tabernacle today. Praise God for that. And it goes into the garments of the high priest, sacrifices in the tabernacle, uh, what it means for us today. So there's a sacrifice. Christ paid everything. No longer sin offering guilt. He is our offering. And he became the penalty for our sin. Burnt offering, surrender, and dedication. A grain offering is giving, praise, thankfulness. Uh, fellowship, peace offering is God's peace, God's feast. Very important. Then they talk about the Ark of the Covenant. Not from the movie with Indiana Jones and uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. When they opened it up and everybody froze and melted or burnt out or whatever. So we don't know. We don't even know where it is today. Uh, some people say the Ark of the Covenant is with the Ethiopian uh, Orthodox Church in Ethiopia. That's where it is. And if it is, let it be there. It's okay. The journey of the Ark of the Covenant from Mount Sinai. All right. Then we come to the Ten Commandments. All of you should know it by now. And the Judges. This is called a cycle. If, you have pre if you're a preacher, a pastor, a minister, you would know this is exactly what the Judges is. Disobedience, oppression, crying out, deliverers raised up by God, a judge, Israel's delivered, Israel's peace, goes back to disobedience. Perpetual cycle in Judges. And he talks about the key Judges over here. Not all of them, but these are the main ones. Starts out with a good one and ends up with probably the worst one ever, Samson. But in the end, the Lord redeemed him. All right, fine. There's a lot more to go here. Talks about the Feast of the Bible. I'm going to be doing a video on this separate. So I'm going to leave this right now. It's Feast of the Bible. Be very careful. Don't let anyone tell you it's Feast of the Jewish people. It's Feast of the Word. Feast of the Bible is the Feast of God. And how it is related to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are very fascinating. I will be doing an in-depth teaching on that uh, pretty soon. I need to just gather all my resources and material. And I'll be talking about the feasts and the holiday calendars. We follow a Gregorian calendar. The Jewish people follow a lunar calendar. They use both the lunar and a solar calendar. Then it comes to the prophets. We talk about the first prophet ever, Samuel. And it ends up with all the way to Joel and the others. Then it talks about the kingdoms of the United Kingdom. <laughs> I call the United Kingdom the kingdom of Israel and the nation of Israel, then it became the divided kingdoms, the northern and the southern kingdom, and all their kings. And you will see here real quick, the evaluation, bad, 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 few good, the rest all nasty and bad. All right, we'll probably do a study on this. There's so much to study. It talks about kings and prophets. Look at this timeline, it's beautiful. So as you're reading the book of um, First Kings and Second Kings and First Chronicles and Second Chronicles, you would get a visual overview. I'm not saying that you can't just read it and be happy with it and say, oh, okay, I, I don't, I, I want more. No, from the Word of God, you can get that, church. But it's always good to have a resource like this, to have a visual and to say, yes, it's good as a resource material to preach, to teach, to have a small Bible study group with it and to encourage the body of Christ. Very important. Then he talks about Solomon's temple. We really don't know. This is, again, visual, artistic, uh, impression we don't really don't know how massive how big and how magnificent because it was the word of god says it was so good it was amazing and again this was just an illustration and we go into that but it's it's all gone it's not there it talks about the temple tour then it talks about jesus and the temple then we come to psalm 23 most famous psalm shepherd imagery in the bible and a lot more. I don't know how long this video is going to go for, so I hope you're not getting bored. Um, statue in the book of Daniel. So what I'm going to do right now is probably I'm going to pause over here and take a little uh, break from this video because there's so much more to cover. I don't want to put a one hour video. I'd rather break it up in pieces. So I'm going to stop right here 
uh, statue in the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Um, he asked Daniel, what is my dream? Interpreted, Daniel gave the exact one, all related to end time events. So it says here the illustration of the statue is, okay, let me just get that. The illustration of the statue is based on the carving of King Nebuchadnezzar's grandson. It is the most accurate representation of the Babylonian style of art. So there you go. And it talks about the head of fine gold and it goes on. So I'm going to pause right here in this video. Uh, so far, I've probably done, I would say, a little bit half of the book over here. The Rose Publishing Guide, Bible Charts, Maps, and Timelines. It's, it's amazing. It's a beautiful resource. I cannot stress on the importance of having something like this. Again, if you do have the resources and the finances for it, and if you do have the time to go through it, I'd encourage you to get this. So I'm done with the video. It's gone over half an hour. I'm going to pause right here and I'm going to do a part two. I thought I could finish this right now, but it's not possible. So I'm going to pause right here. Daniel, have a blessed day ahead of you, church. Have um, a wonderful day. May the Lord watch over you, guide you, lead you, and empower you in the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you do get time, look online for this. And if you do have the, resort, uh, the, the finances, please pick it up over here. And I'm sure you'll be blessed and edified, and you can equip other believers. So have a great day. I'll see you when I see you, and the Lord bless you and watch over you. Shalom.